some of us we have already met in the breakout rooms and with others we will discuss now so till today you have discussed about various types of resources you have uh, also uh, discussed about uh, creation of different variety of resources can i request some of you or all of you to switch on uh, the uh, camera so that we can see each other whether i am able to uh, you know reach out to you you are able to understand me it will be more interactive for all of us if we are on camera if the bandwidth allows so i'll request as many of you can switch on the cameras yes good to see you three uh, four members have already opened and one of the i think no answer i think have already were in the previous year also i somehow think so your na name is familiar to me okay so now uh, you know this variety of uh, digital resources you know how to create these digital resources also now why we need to evaluate e resources or why we need to evaluate digital content first question is this the second question is how do we do that kaise kare how do we uh, evaluate the resources then what are these resources to be evaluated what we consider as a e resource or digital resource or e content what are those things which we consider as e content what is the need for uh, reviewing them what is the need for evaluation and how to evaluate so basically we are going to cover these three questions here in this session can be slightly theoretical but i would be happy if you keep asking questions or discussing about different things so that we know that we are on the same page you are able to understand what i am saying so now i'll uh, start my screen share so that we can see what i'm going to discuss with you i hope the screen is visible to you all yes ma'am okay so first of all the need for e content evaluation why do you need to evaluate the e content evaluation as we discussed and these are the questions which i have already uh, mentioned to you that what are these e content why and how they need to be evaluated now for what are these e content you can focus on this image you can see the variety of images uh, variety of resources are mentioned here you are very well aware of audio resources you are aware of video resources you are also aware of images graphics games presentation but you might not be aware of simulation interactives so we have got a variety of digital resources not all of them are listed here many of them are here but you may go beyond this list also that a single text document can also be an e resource and the virtual labs uh, which you will be which i think you have discussed yesterday is also a part of e resource that is also considered as simulations augmented reality machine learning uh, vr virtual reality everything content out coming out of this is also considered to be e content so we cannot restrict ourselves to one type of e content but we have variety of digital content which can be used for learning which can be taken to the classroom which can be uh, used for teaching learning and as well as for assessment so uh, these are the e contents which we which need to be evaluated before you know presenting it amongst the learners before giving it away to the learners now we come to the next question which is the why e content need to be evaluated so the need for evaluation we will uh, understand from these points the first point is the reliability and validity of the e content for example 
you, we, uh, for example, in the previous session, we all joined breakout rooms, right? But when once we joined the breakout room of, say, for example, any subject, we joined it for Hindi or English or languages or mathematics. When we entered that particular uh, breakout room, we realized that there was nothing related to relevant to that particular topic. Say, for example, if I say my subject, history and political science, when we entered, most if anyone has realized that no, these tools are not useful for social sciences or for history or for political science, then that is where the uh, topic of reliability and validity comes in. Validity means whatever the topic is, we are dealing with the content of that particular topic. Right? We are teaching what needs to be taught. And reliability is some of you experience that, yes, this can be used in political science, this can be used in history. Some of you said, no, this cannot be used. Some of you said, up to an extent, this can be tried. So this is the reliability. That means up to what extent it can be used. If it is, uh, the result is like most of you agree that it can be used, then the reliability is good. Then the content is good. It is reliable to be used for social sciences. But if 50% of you did not agree, then there is some kind of confusion. I need to overview my topics. I need to overview the content which I have discussed with you so that we can correct it and find out the reliable topics which are more suitable to your subject. Right? So this is the reliability and validity of particular digital content. Uh, yes, uh, I could see uh, the different answers are coming. Relevancy to content based on learning outcome and most important is interesting. User of variety is also one of the criteria to break monotony. I want to attend biology class, but I am unable to do this is something else. Content validity is important. Construct validity. Yes, we have further different validities. We can go on to that. Construct is basically when we are uh, preparing a tool for uh, measuring certain construct, that means intelligence, which we have defined in certain terms, then it is a construct. So here we are talk uh, talking about particular topic, whatever we want to teach in the class, our resources, our examples, our digital content should be related to that particular topic. The second point which comes is appropriateness of the content in the sense of nature of content, which means that we have a topic which we teach in class 6. We have a, the same topic we are teaching in class 7, in class 8. But the difficulty level of the content is increasing. Right? So we have to check whether the content is appropriate to the learner of that particular class. And the type of, the nature of the content in the sense that so that we can deal it accordingly. If it is a very theoretical content, we can bring out a story out of it. We can make it interesting in some other way. If it is a practical, we should do it either a demonstration or we can do a classroom activity. So based on the nature of the content, we should check the e-content. Then there, there is method of teaching. Second, the, the next point, appropriateness is method of teaching. In the e-content, Appropriate method of teaching has been followed for that particular content. For example, if I am going to explain parts of flowers, right? In that case, I need to use certain images of the part of the flower or I can also bring in. There is nothing like I have to use only images, only technology. I can bring in two, three different flowers in the classroom, real flowers and show them the parts of the flower. So, the method of teaching, we need to check whether appropriate method has been adopted according to the need of the content. Then we have got the context of the learner. We need to understand the learner here. That means from which part of the 
area the learner is coming what is the social psychological physiological context of the learner what is the emotional level of that learner and based on that we need to teach them for example a child sitting in delhi we can use different type of technology but a child in the tribal area we need to be very careful whether the child will focus on content or on the technology so we should be aware that which kind of content is provided to the learner then the fourth point is available technology that means you have created a very well animation for the part of flowers you are showing uh, all the parts in graphical mode you are moving it as an animation you you created a very interactive very uh, interesting digital content but when you take it to the classroom you are not able to play it maybe because of uh, the uh, electricity is not available or maybe the sound system is not all working or maybe the visual we don't have a screen there so as a teacher we should be careful the content we are creating do we have the technology for displaying that content in the classroom for reaching out to the learner or if we think that we can share that digital content with the learner through a link or they can download it from somewhere in that case if the file is very heavy the child would not be able to download that file because of the internet connectivity in different areas we have less internet connectivity in some some areas we have good connectivity in other areas so based on that we have to decide the quality of the digital content quality in terms of the resolution not in terms of the content as such content should all, always be of high quality but the aspect ratio can be changed based on the device if we are playing it in mobile then we can make it a smaller video it will be easier to download and upload so this is the point we need to understand for the available technology what is available to the learner we should use that technology while teaching particular content now we have discussed about what are digital resources we have also discussed why do we need uh, just a second no we are left with a few points here i just skip this slide so available technology we have discussed the third point is cost effectiveness now what is this cost effectiveness say for example you are going to teach again i'm taking the same same example part of flower you are spending so much of amount on creating a maybe animation or a graphical content but do you really need to spend on that can we not do it with the real flower or with the digital images of the flower parts of the flower so if we have the feasibility that you know value for money which we say cost cost for the resource it should be relevant to the content if the content cannot be taught in any other way then we can spend maybe on simulation you have seen virtual labs the experiments we don't have experi uh, science labs in the schools we don't have language labs in the school in that case creating virtual labs is a good idea spending so much on simulations will be a good idea because students will be able to access these labs digitally and without any harm to them which is uh, possible in the real lab settings so there spending a bigger amount on creating virtual labs will be a very good option but for creating a small digital content on parts of flowers would not be a very wise decision so we should see whether the value which we are uh, with we are spending on creating a digital content will be a useful approach or it would not be so based on that we should uh, create that particular content then there is licensing licensing you have discussed about oer in your on your day one which talks about open educational resources or which talks about open source that means what is available on not only just freely but openly free means we don't have to pay anything open means we have the liberty to make changes to the platform also that means 
One video is available freely to us, but it also gives us permission to edit the video and make changes according to ourselves. For example, you saw a video, it is very nice, but it is in some language which might not be useful to your children. You can take that video, it is an open source video. You can take that video, remove the audio, and you can add your own audio in your own language. Maybe you can do it in Garo, maybe you can uh, do it in Khasi, or you can uh, do it in Nagamese. So different languages you can uh, use and then you can create your own video and uh, display it to the students. It will become a regional resource. So for example, on Diksha, whatever digital content, not textbooks, other digital contents, you can use it, you can re-edit it and then use it in your classroom also. So that is the benefit of licensing. So now, we, while evaluating the e-content, we have to check whether the image is under open source or not. This is the kind of task we have to do under evaluation. Now we will see the process, how to evaluate. So whatever points we have just discussed, these will become a method also. First of all is the target audience. We have to focus on the learner. Now, if you see the previous uh, slide, we have the context of the learner. Context of the learner is the target audience only. The age group of the learner, what is their previous knowledge, what is their social cultural background, what is the language, demography, everything what their the learner stands. You have to see that. And based on the need of the learner, the content has to be developed or evaluated. So, for any content which is evaluated at the national level, would have a national approach. But if a content has been developed for, say, for example, uh, in mapping, so in that case, the examples would also be relevant to that particular area. The language would be Mate. The maybe faces of the children would also be of that region so that the learner can relate to those children. So that is the approach we have to follow here as a target audience when we are creating the resource or evaluating the resource. Now the content. Here comes the validity aspect. Accuracy, relevance, how accurate it is. Content is accurate. It should be accurate only. If any changes, any uh, updations have happened, then they should also be marked in the content. Relevance to the child, relevance to the syllabus, content coverage, updation, curriculum alignment, everything shall be checked upon and then only the content shall be prepared and based on that it should be evaluated. Now here, for example, we are talking about, uh, we are marking the states in India, but we have not chosen a correct map. That means now we have Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh as two different union territories and not as one state. So we should have that, we should have the updated map with us before coming to the classroom so that we are giving the accurate and updated content to the children. Now, for example, we have got a bill. Uh, any uh, uh, bill has been passed in Lok Sabha. So we can give reference to the new bills also. So we should have the updated knowledge for that particular digital content. Then pedagogical cons uh, consideration. Here we are talking about the methods of teaching which we have discussed previously. What are the objectives of that particular resource? Or how the content in that program or in that audio or in that image has been content has been delivered? What is the media selection, whether it is appropriate? Media selection and presentation formats you have already discussed in the audio sessions. We will also be discussing it in tomorrow video session. So you have to focus on that part also. Whether the correct media has been selected, that means you want to showcase your content as an audio, video, image, simulation, or any other kind. Presentation format also is uh, like that. You want to use a uh, talk show, you want to do a discussion, you want to do an interview, you want to um, do a box popping. So it is up to you which kind of format you are choosing. It will depend on the learner as well as on the content. It should have contextual to the local needs. That means examples, faces, everything should be contextualized. The next comes the presentation. 
now we are reviewing the content so we should be focused about the presentation also that it is looking good aesthetically it is looking good it is considering different values motivation it is creative also it is following universal design of learning universal design of learning means if uh, we have visuals we have audio we can also give subtitles so that can make it more accessible to the different uh types of learners we have in our classrooms then we have technical features that means the file what is the file format whether we can play it on different devices or not can we upload it on different platforms or not so all these has to be checked upon metadata has been properly created metadata means who has created that file what is the title of the file where it is available whether the other person can use it or not what is the license what is the copyright everything shall be mentioned as a metadata for particular resource what is the duration all the aspects shall be given here also technical features means that the technical quality of the digital content shall also be looked upon here the next is administrative consideration which uh, talks about the cost we discussed in the previous slide cost effectiveness all this will cover under administrative consideration delivery mechanism support training maintenance infrastructure and technology requirement everything will be considered here which we discussed under in the previous slide as cost effectiveness and available technology will be covered as a administration administrative considerations now these are the major points which we have to look upon while we are evaluating any e content now do we have a tool can we create a simple tool out of this so that we can easily evaluate the particular uh, digital content so yes we have got parameters which we have just discussed and we have got tools also and guidelines also for e content development and e content evaluation both so for this we will go on to the website of ciet this is ciet.ncert.gov.in once you log uh, land on this website right now i am directly landing otherwise you can come to these resources also say for example i click here on resources you can see e content guidelines e content evaluation so e content guidelines belongs to content creation guidelines this is the same page which is already open here you can see two guidelines one is for children with special needs and the other is one for e content for school education so if i click this you can go through this guideline document that how careful you should be while creating any digital content so just go through this document and see so once you will start creating digital content based on these guidelines there is a chance that the under evaluation it will be accepted so these are different guidelines points which are given here you can see this <coughs> types of e content also given here which we have used in our presentation so we have different all the ideas already displayed in the presentation and you can also uh, read this document in detail for your own uh, learning we'll just go ahead again now next is evaluation so when we create digital content in ciet we focus on an instructional designing approach that is called ad ad there are different models of instructional designing but we are following ad as such so ad stands for analysis design development and implement and then evaluation but this model is important for content creation because evaluation is not limited only after the creation evaluation is actually at every stage once you analyze what you want to create as a teacher then you can evaluate it with the help of co teachers whether i am planning it in a correct way or not then you design that means what you are going to actually create you are just detailing out designing out the things then you can also evaluate after that 
then the stage of development will come where you will actually develop a video or audio. In the designing stage, you are basically collecting all the resources, data for final development of the content. In the development itself, we have got a script, we have got a storyboard, we have got a recording, we will get our audio recording done, we will have our music and then we will culminate it as a final project. And then we will evaluate it through our teachers, also implement it on students, whether the content has come out well. After this implementation, we will get to know if the, uh, this uh, digital content is appropriate for learner or not. So while creating, while uh, creating content, if we follow this intrinsic, uh, this uh, detailed process of creating, then the ev evaluation will be automatically done for that particular digital content. Right now, we will go to the uh, again. We will move on to the CIT website, and we will see the evaluation content evaluation. Uh, how to uh, do the in content evaluation. We will see one tool also. You can see here we have e-content evaluation tool, parameters for e-content evaluation assessment tool. So first of all, parameters I will discuss. I will show you what it is and then we will also see the e-content evaluation tool. In parameters, you can see here the first is factual accuracy, which we discussed as the content uh, validity also. If the content is valid, it is factually accurate. We have to give the answer. Then legal, legal means of proprietary content. That means the thing which we discussed as open educational resource or we have the permission to access that particular resource. <laughs> Technical glitches. If the sound is properly done, it is in sync with the visual. The, we can hear the sound properly. There is no technical glitch. The visuals are also very clear to us. Then we have the constitutional and statutory appropriateness. That means our constitution also gives us certain guidelines through which we work. So we should follow those guidelines in our content also. For example, we need to respect all the genders, all the communities, irrespective of their caste, creed. So our content should also show that that we are respecting every community, every caste, every creed, and we are not doing any kind of gender bias. So all those things, and also we need to adhere to fundamental rights and duties. We cannot give any uh, derogatory remarks against any person or thing, or maybe any uh, uh, thing of any national importance or any group or any religious identity and like this. So we have to follow the uh, constitutional thinking in the digital content also. Then alignment with the topic or subtopic of the classroom uh, textbooks or the curriculum. Because whatever we are teaching in the class, the content should be relevant to that or shall be extending upon those topics only so that they can learn better. Then the pedagogical and andragogical structure. For example, the method of teaching, the examples, the maxims of teaching, we are coming from difficult to simple or sim simple to difficult, concrete to abstract. We need to follow all those maxims of teaching also while uh, creating the digital content that we are starting with easy content, then we are moving to the difficult part or we are starting from simple, we are moving to complex. We are starting from concrete, which is visible, we can touch, to the abstract ideas which we have to imagine. So all this we have to be careful about while creating digital content or evaluating digital content. Then the language and comprehensibility. The language should be correct grammatically also and it should be age appropriate also. That means we are not throwing jargons on the children that they are not able to understand. We are showcasing our language. No. Based on the level of the learner, we should use the simple language and also it should be grammatically correct. That we have to see here in the language and comprehensibility. Then format of the presentation. This you have discussed. We have already discussed pace of the program. Pace means the speed with which it goes. It should not be very slow that it becomes boring. 
इट शुड नॉट बी वेरी फास्ट दैट वी एक्चुअली स्किप द कंटेंट ड्यूरेशन नाउ अ डेज वी नो दैट इट इज अ वर्ल्ड ऑफ रील्स सो इट इज अ थर्टी सेकेंड कंटेंट सो फॉर इन एजुकेशनल पर्पज वी कैन गो फॉर टू टू फाइव और सेवन और टेन मिनट कंटेंट नॉट बियॉन्ड दैट इफ वी आर गोइंग बियॉन्ड दैट वी शुड ऑल्सो कीप कंसिडर द एज ऑफ द लर्नर इफ दे आर हायर एजुकेशन लर्नर्स और दे आर सेकेंडरी लर्नर्स देन वी कैन गो बियॉन्ड टेन मिनट्स ऑल्सो स्लाइटली बट नॉट मच बियॉन्ड बट फॉर यंगर किड्स वी शुड रिस्ट्रिक्ट आर सेल्स टू फाइव टू सेवन मिनट्स ओनली सो दैट दे डोंट गेट बोर्ड there is no monotony in the classroom rather we are more engaged with the content so these are the parameters on which we need to evaluate the content now if you see the tool here this tool will explain all the parameters only all the parameters are in the briefly mentioned it here here as a tool as a question so first one is factual accuracy second is legal use third is content then three more technical glitches then constitution then uh, alignment then pedagogy language everything is the same and based on that we are going to review the content now here if you think if you see this also you will find out that if the content is not securing a yes in the first four parameters then the content shall be rejected what are those first four parameters if you see these are factual accuracy if the content is factually incorrect it will be rejected if the content has legal implications it will be rejected if it has technical glitches i am not able to see the video properly or i am not able to listen to the audio properly when the content is made to be reviewed revised and then sent again for the review and also if it is violating the constitutional values it will be rejected so this is given at the end that these four points the first four are mandatory for further review otherwise there is no point of reviewing the content if the content is factually incorrect so these are the uh, e content evaluation the process of Uh, evaluating any digital content now we have understood what is the need for the uh, e content evaluation and how to evaluate the e content also we have understood what is what are we considering as a e content right so now till here if you have any questions we can take that or we can now move on to actually evaluating one of the digital content i'll play one content here then we will see how you evaluate that particular content based on these tools can we take the questions here so when your screen was shared i think you were not able to see the tools Sunil Dangal Sharma has written that the screen share was not done. I had shared. If you had any problem, I can share it again and show you once. Okay. Okay. You can anyway go to the CIET website and then you can see all these tools under the category resources. when you are at your state level also evaluate evaluating the digital content then you can use these tools for evaluation okay it was a network issue right any questions regarding the uh, evaluation no okay so now we will move on to i will play one uh, resource and you will evaluate it based on the points which we have discussed right now CIET and CERT presents the series of English stories learning to listen and listening to learn 
फ्रेंड्स लेट्स लिसन टू दिस प्रोग्राम एंड एंजॉय i hope you are able to listen to this uh, program and see also the screen can anyone confirm yes the screen is visible okay audio is also there maybe uh, please play it once okay just a second mm-hmm. Yes, it is audible. Um, okay. but please increase the volume a bit. Please. Small story. It usually has animal characters as your rules. It's it's going good. Listen to something. Animals and characters you meet there. The fox was not only was clever. One day, a fox told him, "You know, friends." फॉक्सिल The cock found a pearl. So you heard this small pebble. First of all, my question to you all is: This is what is this type of resource? Is this? Uh, I don't want to mean anything. It it is a graphic. It is an image. It is a simulation. It is an interactive resource. What it is? What is the type of resource? yes it is a audio resource why did i ask is because sometimes we give this uh, thumbnail so sometimes the viewer thinks that it is a video but video is not coming so this thumbnail is only for uh, for example if we are uploading it on youtube then the thumbnail will be there on the screen otherwise it is just an audio resource right so first of all our first question gets answered here now we have heard a very small fable of approximately 1 minute and 10 seconds right do you think the time is appropriate for the age group it is targeted to no okay what is the age group we are targeting here you can unmute and speak also Seven to ten, five to six, eight, six. So basically, I will consider it as maybe primary or rather, uh, you know, maybe now we call it uh, class one to three only, not beyond that. So for that, we are targeting at content which is very small. When we talked about wheel. There are thirty seconds educational content. So it is possible for us to create uh, the smaller content. It is always good. We are focusing on creating bite-sized content. So if you look at from the that perspective, then the size of the digital content is appropriate. We just play this audio to the children, and then we can ask them for the discussion. This way, we have told the story also, and we are able to involve them in the discussion also. so whoever said not appropriate is i think uh, you can give reasons for uh, calling it not appropriate but i think it is appropriate for the type of age group we are dealing with because they are very younger children and they are not they don't have a very longer span of attention now yes monalisa no ma'am okay no any it's appropriate Okay, I thought you were adding something. Uh-huh. Sorry, ma'am, I have unmute, um, unmuted accidentally. No problem, no problem. Okay, so now let's also discuss. Was it factually okay? Factually correct? The first point. 
So if we, is it factually correct according to your understanding? I'll appreciate if you can all speak here. Um, at the beginning, the audio was not clear, so uh, uh, I didn't get it correctly. Okay, so that is the connectivity issue only, but this audio has been downloaded from Diksha only. You can listen to it. It was a small fable where a cat and a fox are discussing something and cat saves itself, but fox is not able to save. It's a small story. It is a uh, fable. Fable itself means that it is a small story based on animal characters. So it is correct. Why? Because it is age appropriate also because yes, it is age appropriate, it's actually correct. It is not violating any constitutional values also. All the four points in the beginning, we can check those because uh, in the younger, in the smaller classes, we teach these stories and through these stories, we develop the linguistic skills, language skills. We also develop listening, uh, you know, uh, discussion, skill of discussion in the classroom, attention span also. So all these skills can be inculcated through this story. The next was the technical uh, aspect of the content. We could see that uh, the audio quality was appropriate. And the thumbnail was also appropriately telling what it is communicating as a uh, digital content. So that was also okay. However, not interesting, ma'am. Okay. So you can make it interesting. It can be created in a video mode also. Definitely that would be more interesting. But this was created uh, in CIT for uh, the community radio and radio mode. Because not every child has access to the technology. We have to check that also, the available technology. Based on that, the audio was, uh, the option for audio as a type of resource was good. But if the technology is available with the children, this can also be created as a video or animation resource. So this way we can evaluate our digital resources. We can discuss more uh, stories also. Or well, if you have uh, points to raise, we can uh, listen to those points. We have seen factual accuracy, legal use. It is legal because it is created in house in CIT. Technical glitch was not there. Constitutional values were followed. It was curriculum was wise mapped. Pedagogically, it is okay to tell a story. Then language was appropriate. No difficult language was used. Format was perfect. Pace of the program could have been enhanced. That means it is a, you know, it could have, have made a little more slower so that the child gets more engagement time here and the duration could have been increased a little bit. That is the suggestion which I uh, understood from your chats only. So these were the 10 points which were there and we have reviewed the particular digital content uh, with you. Now, if you want even audio, we can put dialogues. Yes, this was a voiceover based. We can do it as a dialogue also. That is a very good suggestion, Poonam, uh, Paunam Sohila, ma'am. That is good. So this way, you can also evaluate digital resources. This is the uh, this was the aim of this session to understand the evaluation and how to evaluate particular digital content. So now, if you have any comments or any questions, we can take that or I can uh, display other video audio or also to uh, further review. Any questions? You want to review one more story or uh, let's wind up here. Maybe shall, can we wind up here or shall I take another resource? One more story, ma'am. Okay, good. So I'm continuing with that table only. Pardon, ma'am. I'm continuing the audio. It has got two, three stories. One we have already discussed. Now I have to play the second story here. But was unhappy. 
a cock the cock found a pearl but was unhappy a cock was walking up and down a farm looking for food he was hungry and had not got even a single grain since morning suddenly he saw something white and shining in the hay ho ho cried he that's for me and he picked it up oh it's not food he cried out he found it was a pearl and threw it away in disgust i need food he said what will i do with a pearl the big fat so here also we have heard a story a cock who found the pearl but was not happy so here we are also telling children that you know the there is no point of procuring things when we need something it is not there the food is the most important thing apart from that there is no other thing which is need based others could be want uh, based also so this is a small story again of 1 minute only so this way you can also create small stories now here we can also understand that without you know very good animation skills or video skills we can create a story based on audio also we can have narration as one of the uh, participant has suggested to us that maybe two teachers can join together one can become a, a fox one other can become a cat or one can become a you know cock and then they can say it in their voice so this will become more interactive or after the presentation of the story in the class you can ask two children maybe to come up and take the story further that means uh, what would have ha happened after that you know that way so in this way their thinking skills will also enhance so these are the Uh, in the evaluation you can also focus how we are how a teacher can use a particular resource in the classroom what what are the ways of involving children into this particular story through different activities also so all these points need to be covered when we are uh, evaluating a particular fishes there were a lot of fishes in the sea the big fishes were proud of their size they said we are the terror of the sea everyone is afraid of us but we are not afraid of anyone they often ate up the small fishes the small fishes tried to fight them the big fishes said do not waste your strength you cannot fight we can easily catch you one day a fisherman threw a net into the sea the net was large and strong the big fishes were caught but the little fishes escaped through the holes discuss the fables with your friend how were the characters and actions in them what do you feel about them share such stories fables that you know with your class so now you have seen here that the instructions are also given the way i discussed with you that how can you utilize these stories in the classroom so this way you can create digital content either as a audio or as a video resource or as an animation and then you can bring it to the classroom to uh, you know uh, discuss it with students but before that evaluate it so that we are going with the correct content in the classroom any questions or anything you want to add to the points no questions okay if there are no further questions i think uh, i have covered most of the points uh, all of the points which i was supposed to cover i uh, hand over the session to nidhi uh, ms nidhi
how to add thumbnail on audio we will uh, do it tomorrow in the in tomorrow's session we will learn to actually create a video so we have to export it as an mp4 file we will learn to do that tomorrow miss nidhi are you there anyone from cit team yes ma'am yes, yes, ma Yes, thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, telling us about the guidelines for uh, developing the we high quality. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Anna. Okay. Now, can no. Hello? No, Hello? it's on your side. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, Anna, okay. you're yes, audible. Ma okay. Okay. It is audible. Just a second. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, yes.